The fourth time I tried it, I went to the psychologist at the suicide outreach clinic. And that was the first time that I started talking about assisted suicide. The psychologist and a psychiatrist both suggested that I, I did explore assisted suicide uh, in, in places overseas, such as Switzerland. They didn't ask me about my lifestyle, my coping mechanisms. It was just, she's got a broken neck, she can't move, why would she want to live? So instead of, you know, committing suicide, which seems like a tragedy, assisted suicide didn't seem so bad because it was somebody helping me and it was, you know, controlled by the medical profession. What I didn't realise was it wasn't my broken neck that was the problem. I just didn't have the skills to cope. I actually started reflecting on my life and my lifestyle. Um, and I read a book by a woman who is now my PhD supervisor, and she talks about quality of life. And I realised that it wasn't my disability that was the problem. It was all the stuff that was manifesting in my head. The reality is, if assisted suicide, um, if euthanasia, if it was available in New Zealand, I wouldn't be here. I was very, very pro euthanasia, pro assisted suicide till about three years ago. So I spent nearly 20 years wishing that there was a bill like this in place and, you know, even arguing for it. But in, in hindsight, it was just because I wasn't coping with my life. Even being presented with the option of, well, this could be an idea, something to consider. It's, it just, it immediately devalues my life. I'm contributing in a really positive way to humanity. And that's exciting for me, that's great. It makes me feel really good about myself and about my life and about helping others, you know, because it's, it's promoting kindness, it's promoting love and that's what I feel, you know, this world really needs.